It's not going to be as cold as it was last night, but still, if you're East River, get ready for one more rather chilly night at bare minimum. Upper single digits and low to mid-teens East River to the west, upper teens and low to mid-20s. As we get ready for more improvement on the thermometer, we into your day on Thursday. We'll see highs climb into the 60s out west, still 40s and a couple of upper 30s to the east. That's not bad considering where we were. We'll talk about the rest of your seven-day forecast, including updates on your Easter weekend outlook coming up in a little bit. But until then, first of four starts right now. Live from Killaland Media Group, Killaland News, first at four. Might not feel like it, but spring break is here for many across the country. It's how some parents are getting creative. Plus, the Iowa State House is reworking who can work in child care facilities without supervision. A closer look at the bill. And later, NCAA hockey is coming to the Premier Center. A look at the preparations ahead of the first game. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. The Pennington County Sheriff's Office and Rapid City Police Department's special response team blocked off an area near an elementary school this morning. The area around Meadowbrook Elementary School was blocked as they searched a home for guns and drugs. Officials say there were believed to be multiple weapons inside the home. Officials say the area is back open and safe. The investigation is ongoing. The Rapid City Fire Department is investigating a house fire in the northeastern part of the city. Firefighters were able to get the fire out quickly or under control, that is. But during the operations, they found a cat inside the home. The cat was taken into an ambulance to get assessed and was not hurt. No people were injured either. The cause is still being investigated. South Dakota Attorney General Marty Jackley is calling on Congress to close a loophole in the 2018 Farm Bill that allowed industrial hemp to be used for HTC products. Jackley says the 0.3% THC limit, which distingu distinguishes industrial hemp from cannabis, is inadequate to distinguish the potential for intoxication. The South Dakota legislature passed a bill this session that bans THC products created using chemically altered hemp. Jack Lee joins 20 other attorneys general in the request. Well, you know what I saw today that I hadn't seen in a while? What's that? The sun. The sun, yeah. Yeah, the clouds finally moved out, Adam. Yeah, it was actually a pretty nice day to get outside, especially if you just took it at face value. But uh, then you stepped outside if you were East River and yeah, it was cold, but at least it wasn't like yesterday where we had to deal with wind speeds of 20 to 30 miles per hour over the course of the afternoon. So progress? We're going to make more of that as we head later into this week. Outside we go. We'll kick things off in Watertown. 26 up in Connington County. Still a bit breezy, though again, not as bad as yesterday. A west wind at 18 miles per hour. From Watertown to downtown we go. There's Lion Park at the bottom of your screen. 28. Look at that beautiful blue sky above Sioux Falls. A west wind more tolerable at 13 miles per hour. And you can very clearly see where we have our snow in place along with cloud cover. That's just basically clipping southwestern South Dakota. But notice again, all of that snow up toward Eagle Butte and Buffalo. But also worth noting, uh, you can see where our rain snow line was right over Sioux Falls, south and east, little to nothing. But then we had that localized banding from Marshall to Madison and even toward the Mitchell area as well. We'll check in on that tomorrow and see just how much of that snowpack gets eaten away with all the sunshine we've had. Even though, yes, it is below freezing, that doesn't matter. We have a late March sun angle to compensate for that. 28 in Aberdeen as well as Mitchell, 34 here on 32, though, in Pierre, but milder as you head out towards Spearfisher at 46, 50 one in Pine Ridge and 47 right now in Rapid City. We'll see some of those 40s migrate to the east with 30s hanging tough the farther north you go along the I-29 corridor, eventually up to the North Dakota border. Still, though, it is a step in the right direction all the same. Out west, we do even better. 50s, some 60s not out of the question tomorrow. That's going to be where we peak for at least a little bit. We don't have a major cool down on the way, but we'll be at least closer to average for this time of year. We'll talk about that. We'll give you updates on the Easter weekend outlook as well, all coming up as we head through the hour. All right. Thanks, Adam. Well, this wet, wintry week certainly doesn't feel like spring, but it is spring break for thousands of kids. Adam Duxter with our CBS affiliate in Minnesota found some parents getting creative when it comes to blowing off some steam. Oh, the weather outside is once again 
frightful. And when it comes to feeling delightful. The groundhog, he lied to us. <laughs> it's cold. Toya Robinson says this winter is more like a ride you can't get off. I thought when we came down here, it was going to be like spring. You know, wear jackets and stuff. We, it's a blizzard outside. Minnesotans and those like Robinson daring enough to plan a trip here in late March. I thought we escaped winter, but no. Feeling the temperature drop quicker than the coasters at the Mall of America. It wasn't sunshiny and uh, beach weather, that's for sure. Leaving them scrambling inside. I thought it was going to be a spring weather, <laughs> but unfortunately winter followed us. Just a few blocks away. Look around you. Everybody's having fun. Everybody's in great spirits. Boots traded for flip-flops and water shoes at the Great Wolf Lodge. Local kids off school, desperate for something fun and warm. I love snow. It's just, I don't like that, like, it snowed a lot, but then, like, the next day it's all mushy and melty. The water park sold out Tuesday. Taking a dip, not so bad when it's 84 degrees. I'm glad I'm in here right now. Not ready to go home, though. As for Toya. Not at all. It feels like winter. She'll be back when the snow is gone. The next time we're going to come in the summertime to so be on the safe side. Good weather. Adam Duxter, WCCO News. And it sold out earlier this week, but the Great Wolf Lodge in Minnesota says that it still has single day passes for local families available on their website for later this week. Iowa House lawmakers advanced a bill to allow some teenage child care workers to briefly care for infants and toddlers without adult supervision. Amanda Rooker with our CBS affiliate in Des Moines explains the bill. An Iowa House bill would let 16 and 17 year old child care workers watch infants and toddlers without an adult in the room. Republican Representative Devin Wood, who's leading the bill, says that would only apply during nap time and short breaks. It would be only for a brief moment of absence, which the uh, department already defines as five minutes or less. But some Democrats have concerns. This bill is a Band-Aid for a problem that needs surgery. Representative Austin Baith says loosening regulations won't fix the child care workforce shortage. We need to be able to recruit more qualified child care workers um, with better wages and benefits. I actually, when this bill is being proposed, went around my son's daycare asking the daycare employees what they thought about this bill. They thought it was kind of ridiculous, to be honest. But Wood says child care centers are asking for this change. Having br been brought this piece of legislation by child care providers in our state and knowing that we have um, young people in our state that have a passion for um, learning more about early childhood development and education, um, I am uh, happy to move this bill forward. Child care advocate E.J. Wallace says he understands the bill's goal. I think the intention is to provide relief. For these child care workers, they, uh, there's a lot of places where they don't have the ability to go on breaks. But he worries it could lead to lower quality child care. We don't want children to be in increasingly more stressful and less safe environments because ultimately parents deserve to have quality safe child care choices for their children. Amanda Rooker, KCCI 8 News, Iowa's news leader. The four men's hockey teams have arrived in Sioux Falls for tomorrow's NCAA Hockey Regional at the Premier Center. And that is where we find Kelloland Sports Director Grant Sweeter with more on the event. Good afternoon, Grant. Don, Boston University, Minnesota, Omaha, and the Rochester Institute of Technology all got a chance to practice here in Sioux Falls. Now, the Boston U Terriers are the top seed in the Sioux Falls Regional and the second overall seed in the entire NCAA tournament. Macklin Celebrini is their top scorer with 31 goals, second best in all the NCAA. His brother, Aiden, is also on the team, and it doesn't stop there. There are two other sets of brothers on the team, including Case and Gavin McCarthy and Quinn and Lane Hudson. I haven't seen three on one team uh, personally. Uh, I think it helps for sure. I think you know brothers are they're they're really competitive typically with each other, and I think that it goes a long way for our team. I think it helps our, our leadership. The Terriers will open tournament play against RIT on Thursday at 4 p.m. And coming up on Cullerland News at 6, we're going to talk more about the local teams in Minnesota and Omaha. But for now, reporting live in Sioux Falls, Grant Sweeter, Cullerland Sports.